Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at managing devices and device groups inside of Profile Manager with actual profiles. So as I shared in the previous screencast, I went over users and groups. This time we're going to do devices and device groups. And again, uh, as much as you can, I'd recommend trying to manage these with device groups. So maybe have a group for all of your Macs and maybe one for all of your iOS devices or iPhones and iPads or something like that. Uh, in my case, I just made a generic group with uh, both my iPhone and iPad in it or, or um, uh, MacBook Pro in it. So that gives you an idea of how to manage this. And again, when I go into the actual uh, profile, it's going to be the same uh, look and feel as it is with devices, only the only difference is you'd be managing one device instead of a group of devices. So let's go over here to settings and let's go ahead and take a look at this profile. We're just going to hit edit so we can edit the profile itself. And it's going to bring up our uh, settings for my devices profile. And these are all of the different things that I can do to my devices. Uh, again, I got Mac OS, iOS, TV OS, so all three can have these. Uh, Mac and iOS can have these, iOS and TV OS these. And then here's all your iOS uh, changes you can make, and then all your Mac OS changes, and then your TV OS change. Now, I want you to notice that there's going to be some different things in here uh, that then you'll see with your individuals, and that's because we're managing devices now. So again, a quick walkthrough. Again, there's the general uh, certificate. Like we said before, you can put your organization name and some details in there if you want to. I've got network. I can configure my uh, all of my devices to use specific network logins like the SSID and password so that that way those devices don't have to put those in, the, in there by themselves. They can just automatically have these things configured. Same with certificates. I can have a certificate that I want to have there or the simple certificate enrollment profile. And I can have that in here as well if I'm using SCEP. Now for Mac OS and iOS, again, passcode things, just like with the individual, I can set up the length of the passcode, whether what type of numbers and characters it needs to have, what the grace period is, maximum field attempts, all of that in here. I can set up VPN for a device. And again, with these particular devices, the device themselves don't have it coming pre-configured, so I need to hit the configuration uh, itself. And so it loads that, so I can put all my VPN information in here, and it'll automatically set up my VPN for me. Same with fonts. Uh, I can put in different uh, font packs uh, here, just upload them and have them available on my Macs uh, or my iOS or tvOS devices. And then the same with AirPlay. I can set up how AirPlay is going to work with my devices. When I come down to iOS and tvOS, there's only two things uh, that overlap, global uh, proxies. Uh, so if you don't know what a proxy server is or using proxies, you don't need it, but uh, it's in here if you do. And then app configuration, where you can configure bundles of apps and have those uploaded and sent to your iOS devices. Inside of iOS, we've got the restrictions area, just like we saw with individuals, that I can set the restrictions on functionality, on apps, and on media content, or I can set the ratings and all that sort of thing, which again is good for your kids or if you're in a school or network environment. Uh, single app mode, and this is where I can set my device to lock to a particular app. So if you're going to use your iPads as, let's say, demonstrations for one application or as a kiosk or something like that, I can come in here and choose the app that I want to set my particular uh, device to, and that's the only app that will show there. And then I can even set the options here. I can touch, I can use motion, volume buttons, I can uncheck things I don't want. Uh, or things that I want to have in there, where I have users uh, set up with assistive touch and all kinds of things like that. Again, really nice if you're just trying to configure your iOS device in a, like a kiosk type mode. Uh, I've got content filtering in here where I can do the specifics. I can use the built-in content filtering and then use permitted or blacklisted URLs. Or I can say specific websites only, that they can only access these websites. Uh, or I can put a plug-in in there. Again, really nice if you got kids or something like that where you just want to limit what they can get to in the websites area, then you don't have to worry about them getting to something bad. Uh, I can set up domains the same way, uh, the different uh, managed Safari web domains and email domains in here. I've got single sign-on if I want to have that set up with certain certificates and such uh, across my different devices. AirPrint, I can set up a different AirPrint printers in here. All i got to do is put in the IP address and the resource path on the network so I can find it. Uh, again, I can set up mail in here, and if I click to configure, ma configure mail, I can set in all of my different uh, mail settings in here. So again, a corporate environment, if you want to set up people's accounts ahead of time, you can do that. 
Same thing with Exchange. You can set up their Exchange accounts to your Exchange server ahead of time. Uh, I got LDAP, right, where they uh, connect to a directory server. I can set that information in here. And then I've got my context calendars, Google accounts, and shared calendars, uh, very similar to what we did with individuals. Uh, I can set up web clips in here. So I've got a, a button with a direct link to a website, and that's good, again, for corporate websites and stuff like that. Uh, cellular, again, I can control how the cellular is used on the device. Uh, so that's that's great. I've got my Mac OS account configuration where I can set up a particular server account in here and that will bring all of the settings to that device. Uh, I can lay out the home screen here which is nice. The dock, I can say what, what applications are in the dock uh, just by clicking on this and I get this download here and it'll show me all my apps and I can do them by pages and just add the different pages to my iOS device. Again, network usage rules. I can set up uh, how we're going to manage cellular or data roaming. Uh, maybe I don't want uh, data roaming there, so I take that off. Uh, again, notifications on my iOS devices. I can set up for the app how those notifications will show up. And then I can do lock screen messages if I want. And I can say if lost return to or an asset tag information, which is really nice. I can set that on there so that that way if my devices get lost, uh, people will know who to contact if they find, found the lost device. Again, that's this one here again is device specific. Uh, for Mac OS, again, we've got the identification information here uh, that we can put in. We've got our restrictions. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I showed you previously, but I can do all these restrictions by preferences, the apps, the widgets on the machine, media, uh, how sharing uh, the sharing feature works, and functionality of what's available to the user. Uh, again, in system preferences, all of the different security settings for file vault and firewall and privacy. You can see I've got much more in here that I can do because these are device specific. Uh, again, I can set up the AD certificate if I'm joining a Microsoft Active Directory. And I've even got my directory information in here that I can configure ahead of time for my open directory for the device. Uh, so at that setup. Here I got the login window. And this is unique to the device. I can set up how I want the login prompt to look, whether I want a banner on there or not. Uh, the different options uh, for how the login window looks, whether I want to allow guest access or not. Uh, here's all the access information. Uh, to the actual Mac, and then I can have certain scripts run at login as well if I want to do that. Again, here's the login items, just like for the individual. If I want uh, certain network mounts to show up or apps to launch, I would do that in here. Uh, again, mobility is just like we saw for the individuals. This is if you've got a home directory account that's on the server and you want to take your laptop out and then have it uh, in sync back to the server, that would be here. I can set up the dock. Whatever I want in the dock in terms of size, etc. And then I've even got a software update here where I can have them specify looking to my server for software updates instead of going to uh, Apple servers. And that just saves time because then I can manage, saves time because they don't have to hit Apple server. And secondly, I can manage the updates I'll allow on my different machines. So, like if a new OS comes up and I don't want users to use it yet till I've tested it, then I can have them point to my server and only get the update when I clear it. Again, I got printers here. Here's Energy sur uh, Saver, which is specific to the machine, how the computer is going to sleep or wake up, uh, all of its different portable, whether it's on battery power or not, and then the schedule for the machine to restart or to sleep. There's parental controls. I've also got Time Machine, where I can configure the actual Time Machine uh, backup server and what to backup in Time Machine. So it gives me some uh, fine features here that I can set up. Uh, again, the finder, just like we showed before, I can set up the finder information, accessibilities like before, vision, hearing, and interacting. Uh, I've also got, if I've got a fiber network or a fiber uh, setup drive, I can set up an XSAN uh, and have all of its uh, configuration information here. And then, of course, I've got proxies if I need them, just like on individuals and custom settings. Uh, I'll just show you what that looks like right in here. For TV OS, I've got some uh, additional things set up. I've, again, I've got restrictions on how it's used, but I can say single app mode for the TV OS as well. So again, if I've got an, uh, an Apple TV that I'm using, let's say, in kiosk mode, I can do this as well. Set the specific app and then what you can do with it uh, when it's in that mode. And then I can also set up the conference room display. And so I can actually put a message on the actual screen that tells people how they can use it and how I don't want them using it, you know, that kind of thing. So that gives you an idea of how to manage devices. Again, there's a lot of powerful things here that you can manage through certificates, and it just makes managing your devices that much easier.
So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.